Hello, Paul here, and I wanna show you a popular style right now. It's a double exposure look. So basically what you're doing is you're exposing two photographs on the same sort of piece of film. I wanna show you how to do that actually in three easy steps in Photoshop. So here I am in Photoshop. Now, first off, I do need to find my images. I have this lovely woman with this long flowing hair, and then I have this lake on Alaska. Now where these came from, are actually from my libraries panel, I've actually used Adobe Stock. So that just allows me to jump out, grab the image I want, right? So that's what I do, search on what I want, and then I could sync it directly to my library double exposure. So that's what I've done. Notice how you can do that with watermarked images, but nonetheless, right in here, there's that image. Here's some watermarked ones, that's fine. My two images are in there ready to go. So. Now, first thing I need to do is actually uh, select this woman and not the background. So there's many ways to do that. Some people use the magic wand tool. Yeah, you could do that. In this case, I'm going to go into color range and select that background like that. And again, you can kind of see how it works. In general, I'm selecting the background and I can adjust the fuzziness, if you will. Uh, and it's okay, uh, I actually, it's gonna create kind of this uh, somewhat grungy look in general, but I'm just gonna drag the fuzziness down like that. And keep in mind, my selection preview is grayscale. It might be set to none. I think grayscale is easier to see. Just click okay. It makes that selection, but we're not done yet, because what I wanna do now is select refine edge. Now from refine edge, I can start to work on uh, sort of the radius of the hair. I can grab more of it or less of it. And in fact, you can see right down here, I'm kind of grabbing some of the background. So you can always shift the edge accordingly either forward or back to get your end result. And it's okay if I select some of her face, I can always clear that up later. And my output is actually going to be a new layer with a layer mask. So selecting that, click okay. There it is. Notice how I actually would like to invert it, right? Because it selected the background and I actually wanna select the woman. So selecting that mask in my properties panel right over here, uh, you can do a command I or control I if you're on a PC, but in general, just select invert. Essentially what I want is I want this layer mask to actually be applied to these mountains, okay? So I could just hold down the command key and click on that layer mask and it's going to select her and I can jump in and you know do some more of a selection as well if I want to. Uh, again, just holding down the shift key and select more of these elements if I want to, just some parts that I've missed. Nonetheless, I'm just gonna go up to Lake on Alaska and right down here, click add layer mask. Now we have that image inside of there. And if I just deselect the link right there, I can start to adjust this and move this whichever way I want. And maybe I wanna scale this a little more, but it's really important to find the right photos and what will work well together. Uh, in general, I like what's going on here. I like these trees are gonna kind of flow into her hair, but uh, really I'm missing her face. So it doesn't really look like a double exposure yet. And that's why I actually want to take this layer of that woman, that's the selection, and bring that up to the top, okay? So obviously we have an issue here because we uh, can't see the background, but nonetheless, you can come in here and just select that layer mask and start painting with black, all right? So that's potentially what I do in this case, is really do a lot of painting and just expose the areas that I want to expose. And in this case, I really just want to expose her face, okay? So I'm gonna erase a lot of it to get this double exposure look, okay? And I'll just click a couple times. What you'll see a lot of times with this look is it's typically a washed out look or a black and white look, which is why I'm gonna go into layer, new adjustment layer, and right down here, black and white. Hey, why not? Create that new layer. It makes everything black and white, and I can start to adjust this any way I want. I like sort of the level of detail that I'm getting with those trees but I can add or subtract. Let's do something like that. And then I'm just gonna drop down the opacity a little bit, just so we get a little bit of that color. After I've created that mask and have that overlay of that woman, that's great, but I want the hair to follow, or excuse me, the trees to follow that same flow as the hair. So I'm actually going to select the trees layer right here, that lake on Alaska, 
And in order to have your photos kind of match up, it's going to take some manipulation. Some people will tilt the image, whatever the case may be. In this case, I'm going to go into filter and I'm going to go to liquify because that's what I want to do. I actually want to liquify this image just a little bit and make it look like hair. So I'll just do some swooshiness just to get some nice manipulation in there because it's supposed to be kind of her hair. And that's what it's going to mesh with. It's going to match up with her hair just fine. There's other ways to do this, uh, but it's fun to make your photos so they match up just like I've done there. But I just wanted to show you this example. It's obviously a hot new style. You've probably seen it around. Now you know how to do it pretty easily and quickly. So thank you so much for watching.